welcome back to my channel it's Amin here and today I am doing a video which I am very excited about and very passionate about I'm going to be answering some questions that you had for me about being a prenatal genetic counselor if you don't know what genetic counseling is you should definitely back up and go watch my other videos um, I have been on YouTube now for over two years and I have filmed content from when I was in graduate school for my master's when I graduated when I started my job now I've been working as a year as a prenatal genetic counselor um, and I feel like I've gotten my footing now I kind of know what I'm doing I know there's not a lot of information out there about genetic counseling so I like to make these videos to you know get the word out and kind of do some outreach answer some questions that you guys have and so over on Instagram I asked you guys to ask me some juicy questions about being a prenatal genetic counselor um, almost a month ago so if you don't follow me on Instagram you should definitely do that get in on all of the action um, but yeah, just some questions that um, you had for me now that I am in the field. So I'm going to go through the questions. I haven't really looked at them before, so it'll be my honest reactions. And some people were requesting these types of videos to be done with other types of genetic counselors. So there's so many different kinds. Let me know down below which other ones you'd like to see. I can definitely ask my classmates, my peers. Um, colleagues, things like that, whoever's comfortable making a Q&A video like this. Prenatal genetic counseling is really helping people who are in a pregnancy already, so couples or pregnant individuals. Um, I also do a lot of reproductive counseling, so planning a pregnancy knowing that there is a genetic condition in the family. So let's start with the first question is, what is one of your most memorable prenatal cases and why? This is a very good question. Um, I often am following people for a very long time and I've definitely had my difficult situations, my difficult cases. I don't wanna go into too much detail obviously because these are you know, confidential private situations. Um, but what the most memorable ones are the ones that really stress me out. So I have all of these marks on my face um, and there's one case in particular that really stressed me out for a while and kind of broke me out um, and I still have scars from it but basically it was a situation where this person was pregnant with twins um, and very early in the pregnancy you could see on ultrasounds that something with one of the twins was just not right and then we did testing and one of the twins had a chromosome abnormality and then for all of our diagnostic testings, we offer um, chromosomal microarray as well, which is looking for those rare types of genetic conditions um, with very small missing or extra pieces of the chromosome. And it turns out that the other baby that didn't have the ultrasound problem had a problem with the microarray. Um, and so what are the odds? Very low. And then we did parental testing to see where the microarray difference came from, if it was new in the baby or if it was something from mom or dad. And it did come from one of the parents. Um, so that was very interesting. It was like a type of, I think it was either, a, it's either a deletion or a duplication. I don't remember what it was, but it was um, variable expressivity, which means that it shows up differently in people. Some people will have no symptoms. Some people will have, you know, very noticeable things some people have kind of a mixture like very mild things um, so that was a very difficult difficult case in general on top of all of that um, we needed an interpreter the entire time now where I work we use interpreters quite often because it's a very diverse population and I have no problem obviously using interpreters but imagine explaining all of these things like one thing after the other after the other after the other using an interpreter not knowing if the person is fully understanding what's you know being said what's happening in the pregnancy luckily one of my co-workers actually spoke the same language as um, the patient themselves so we ended up um, i ended up asking her to help me quite a bit um, which is such a skill to have and i also speak a couple of different languages and i've only had to help in a case once so far um, in my one year which is actually insane um, it kind of just depends on the demographic right in the area that you're working in um, like if i was working a little bit closer to home i think i would be speaking my own language all the time but um, because I work a little bit further away from where I live, um, the demographic is a little different. But anyway, so that case, it went on for a long time. It was like, I want to say two months in total, like one thing after the other, after the other, after the other. And then it was questions about like, okay, what about my living children? Like, do I need to get them tested? Um, so yeah, very memorable. Um, 
but good at the same time because they made decisions that were right for them and their family. Another question I got, a very good question, were you always drawn to prenatal or were you interested in other specialties? Um, when I was applying to graduate programs, I only had exposure to cancer genetic counseling. Um, that's just what's more accessible, honestly, and I do understand now why prenatal is a little bit harder um, to get your foot in the door in terms of like observing or you know volunteering and stuff like that um and so i kind of knew in my gut that i always wanted to do prenatal and i used to volunteer at a sexual assault support center and i'm a i would say a pretty strong feminist so i just felt like helping i know there's more than just women that can be pregnant but the majority of people i know identify as women and i just felt like Supporting these people making decisions like giving them autonomy to make their own decisions was something that like I would really want um, So I was actually applying to prenatal jobs before I even had any prenatal exposure Funny enough my last set of rotations was in the last semester of my last year was when I finally got my prenatal rotations It's just kind of just luck of the draw whatever happens happens and I was applying to jobs for prenatal before I even had an experience. It did come up a couple times like in interviews and stuff like that, but I just said like, trust me, I, this is what I need to do. Um, so I have to say I was always drawn, drawn to prenatal and sometimes people do have a gut feeling about what they wanna do either because they've had exposures to it like in shadowing cases or they've heard about it or they're just really interested in like research in that kind of area um so everybody has a different feeling some people don't know what they want to do or they think they want to do something and then they go through their rotations and they're like nope this is not for me so grad school is like really that kind of experience sometimes you leave grad school and you're like you know what like i'm fine with either of them i'm fine with everything and that's fine too another question is does it ever feel too emotionally challenging and this is a good question and it kind of goes into another one which is what is your work-life balance i think in any job where you're helping people through a very difficult time you're kind of taking the hit right of their emotions um again through my volunteer experiences before i even started graduate school like i got very good at that and i really enjoy it and just being there for somebody through what is like probably the most difficult thing of their lives and their family's lives um it really is gratifying but it can be too much, right? And that's one of the hardest things that somebody asked me, what's the hardest part about your job? I think it's literally like breaking people's hearts. Um, but at the same time, like you always, I always tell myself like, this is the right thing to do. They need to know the truth and then they can decide what to do with that truth. And another thing, a big thing as to why I, I'm okay with this job is because I have pretty strict boundaries. And that was one of the other questions about work-life balance. I have really strict boundaries. I try really hard um, to start work at 8.30 and I leave work at 4.30. I don't bring it home with me. It's been a couple of times, like, you know, my twin lady with my pimples where like, I do have dreams about patients at night or I wake up and I'm like, oh my God, I forgot to send somebody a really important email. So things like that happen, which I think is completely natural, but you have to let it not happen all the time. Um, and so if I did let, ha let it happen all the time, like I would be exhausted, I would be drained in all capacities. And you just have to make sure that you're doing other things outside of work that make you who you are, that fill your cup, for example. Um, so it does take a lot of work um, to make work enjoyable, but I think so far that it hasn't been too much for me that I am doing pretty good so far. Another question I got, is a job market for genetic counseling competitive? Um, and I think it depends really on the location that you're at. So for me, because I'm Canadian, I wanted to come back home. I have a whole other video about that, um, or I answered this question in another video before. So I'm gonna link up the video here. Um, but this answer really depends on your location, on if you're flexible with either the location or the specialty that you're in. Um, as of right now, I think there are definitely enough jobs. When I graduated, almost everyone in my class had a job either before graduation or like within a month of graduation um but obviously th things can change you know that was already a year ago i don't know what the market is like anymore um it really just depends on your location and the last question i'm going to answer which is one that's going to make me very angry is um how is overturning roe v wade impacting prenatal genetic counseling um again i'm from canada so i'm not directly impacted by it um, but i feel very strongly about what's been going on 
Um, and I just want to say that abortion is healthcare. And as somebody who provides this option and talks about it every single day of my life to multiple people, taking that option away from somebody is honestly like one of the worst things that could happen to not only the person who's pregnant, but to their family, to the, per the, the child that is, you know, being forced to come into this world. Um, that I, like, there's so many things that can happen in a pregnancy and the person who should be making that decision should be the one who is responsible physically for this being emotionally for this being financially met look like every there's so many different considerations and so many of my patients themselves when they make a decision to end a pregnancy they will say i used to be pro-life i never thought i would make this decision ever in my life i feel so differently now having to go through this and they always say that they are so glad to have had the option regardless of if they choose or not to just having the option right it's honestly like the bare minimum and again i, I won't speak too much on it because i'm not the expert in terms of like the american laws um but i will link some information in the description below there's a podcast by laura hersher who was my graduate thesis supervisor and also an awesome person in the genetic counseling field um and she did a podcast with dna today kind of explaining what is the impact going to be on genetic counselors but anyways this is a hill that i will die on a very important part of my job and i always say that abortion will always be around for the people who have the means to do it the people who have the money the access the resources and the people who do not will suffer more than they already have been so with that i'm going to wrap up this video i hope this video was interesting for you i hope it answered some questions that you had if you have questions about other specialties like cancer pediatrics industry research let me know um, in the comments below and i'll try my best to find someone to do a q a for that for which you should follow me on instagram if you want to get the updates if you're interested in genetic counseling check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel and i will see you next time thanks for watching